Well, hey guys, how's everybody? I hope everybody's well. Well, it looks like our little uh, chain grinding series looks like it's gonna do okay. It's still growing. That's just kind of the way my videos do. Um, they don't ever just kind of take right off all at once. But um, what we are gonna do here in this video, and honestly, I've about already dulled the chain. Um, <laughs> I've used it a little bit, so what we're going to do is go a little more advanced with it, just a little more hungry, uh, so to speak. So, with that said, to bring you guys back, as you can see, it's been used, it's full of saw chips. Um, we get over here to the grinder. Okay, so I'm using the head camera here, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see. If you need to know how to set things up, refer back to the last video in this series. I've got a DSLR camera set up. Zoomed in pretty close, but basically just to recap everything, your head angle's up here, your top plate angle's here, and your downward tilt is over here. Um, if you're adjusting your downward tilt, I didn't go over that. We may go over that in the next video, but um, let's say you were doing the left-hand cutter, you're going to pull the base toward you if you're doing the right hand cutter you're gonna push it in away from you um we are dead in the center on zero but what we are gonna do today and looks like our wheel's still good it's still good and clean um you want to take your dressing stone to your wheel if they're not clean i did not go over that in the last video i noticed that after i uploaded it but um most of them will come with these these things kind of suck um what you'll do you'll just run the grinder and you should clean the wheel if there's any crap or dirt but these will come with a little cord mine's here somewhere but usually just eyeball it's good enough on the profile uh, you want something round you don't want it real real pointy although i ain't for sure what that would do but I know if you have it real, real blunt, the chain doesn't cut very well, so if you're doing everything else right and your chain ain't cutting good, it could just be the simple fact you've got your wheel dress just a little too blunt. Um, but anyway, um, the only things we've changed here, the wheel's the same, um, and you will need to take just a little more, more material than before because we're changing the angles here. Um, we have, we've went from 60 to 55 on the head tilt. This is gonna make it just a little more grabby. I said yesterday, like an Oregon EXL chain, the specs are 55, 25, and 10. Uh, that's a full chisel chain. Um, what we have done here is we're going 55 on the head angle. We went from 25 to 30 on the top plate angle and we've left this at zero. We may get into that in the next video or the next part of the series, but um, the steeper you have this or the higher the number, in theory, the faster that chain will cut, but also in theory, the faster it'll dull. Um, the head tilt, the lower the number, usually the more aggressive it's going to pull so i've already got all this set up for sake of the video this chain's got two cutters on the left side starting out so we'll start there you can start with the link where your chain ends or in a lot of cases if i'm in a hurry i've usually got like a bottle of white nail polish we'll throw the chain in here make a mark and go to grinding but normally on your left hand cutters if your light's working you can most always tell um, that you're good to go. We'll grind a few. I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll go out and make some cuts. Grind you have that set amount taken away and I don't know how well that's showing but that chain has an awesome beak to it. It is like a razor. It's got the side plate ground good. Um, we're good to move on forward to the next link to be our next left hand cutter. 
I'm gonna pull back tension against, lock it down. So if we're taking a little more material, it's gonna take a little longer. Again, just like yesterday, if you've got burrs or something, you're taking too much. And again, just like the other cutter, that one's good smooth, like a razor. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind the chain and then we'll bring you guys back um, once we're out, once I've got it done and I can zoom in and give you a good look at the cutter. guys there's a look at that cutter hopefully we're staying focused i think i'm far enough away from it but um real nice real sharp um you don't want to brush up against this if it's uh, sitting on the shelf you will get cut i promise you um next thing we need to do is get our uh, drags reset on it and then we'll get into cutting some wood again we're just using our oregon depth gauge it's not taking a lot off about what we did yesterday a few swaps but then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come back around and take an extra swipe off of each raker or drag just depends on what part of this country you're standing in i guess And again, I have the progressive gauges, but this seems to work just the same. It sets them about where your progressive gauge would on the hard setting. Okay guys, so I decided just to leave the drags with the set and with the Oregon depth gauge just to, just so maybe we can compare, um, say what the difference in the cutter angles do from what we had yesterday. Um, we've got the camera on a tripod now, so maybe we can zoom in on a cutter. There, we have a really good look at what's going on with that cutter now. It is like a razor, razor's edge. Cutters, they're all the same way to you. Some people say, well, it doesn't look sharp when we have a sharp chain. Um, it probably ain't a race chain, but uh, to me, that's pretty daggone short. Of course, we can't see nothing on the other side. There you have it, guys. That's a pretty good looking cutter, in my opinion. Anyway, um, let's go see how this thing cuts in the wood.
dig it out so there's what's still looking like after cutting. Still good and sharp, but still pulling a good chip. And like I said, those rakers are that you guys call them were the drags. We call them here so it's very, very passive. I don't even know that it's the 25 thou everybody runs. I don't know. I've just always used that gauge. Um, when I get into wanting to get saws to cut faster, more grabby on the bigger saws, or something like this in the softer woods or smaller wood, um, you know, I'll take a couple swaps or I'll get one of the progressive gauges out um, and do that. That's what we might do in the next video. We might just leave it as is and just take a little bit off the drags and see what it does but that cutter is still my gosh it's still sharp like a razor and i guess sharp's just you know i'll in what you want or i'll in a pinion i guess but um you know that's pretty damn hard red oak um not many people are going to argue that that little saw's getting it done in it and you know with a dull chain you can sit and pull and push all day and you're just going to have freaking smoke off of the bar but again most people are not going to buy this saw and set it up to cut that size of wood um, but again you know this one's pretty dang highly modified and very very quite capable of you know doing larger work but anyway uh, thank you guys for watching um, hope y'all have a great day